Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Cosmophoto's YouTube channel. This is the first in a series of films we're going to be doing, looking at some of the weird and wonderful camera designs um, from film photography's history. Uh, and this week uh, we are looking at a pretty special camera. It's a 1950s professional SLR made for photojournalists and studio photographers. This camera, like the Exacta, comes from behind the Iron Curtain, though this time it's from the Soviet Union rather than East Germany. And the camera is the KMZ Start. So this giant SLR, 35mm SLR, actually came into production in 1958, which was a whole year before the Nikon F, which is sort of seen as the first modern system SLR. By system, we mean a, a camera, an SLR camera that had a load of different accessories from prisms to lenses to uh, accessories, which made it a lot more versatile. KMZ wanted to create a rival for the Exacta SLRs so that uh, journalists in the Soviet Union or Soviet-aligned countries had a top-of-the-range camera. But they came up with this, the start, which has a combined uh, aperture lever and shutter button on uh, the side of the camera, a bit like a lot of the Exacta cameras did at the time. It's also very similar to some of the Topcon SLRs uh, made around the same time in Japan that were kind of a precursor, a, a pioneer for the, the Nikon F series. It's a true system SLR because it has things like a removable um, prism so that you could put in things like a, a magnifying finder, sticking a, uh, a magnifying um, scope on top of it, or indeed a waist level finder like you might see on a uh, the twin lens reflex camera. A great thing with this camera is it has a huge bright finder and it actually captures 100% of the frame on 35 millimeter film, which was pretty much unheard of. Even into the 1990s, it was only cameras like the Nikon F5 that bought you that. Um, so it's pretty special to find that in a camera from the 1950s. So the start comes with this, which is the Helios 44 lens, the famous uh, Soviet standard lens that, that rendered these uh, beautiful out of focus areas when you open the aperture up. It was one of the first cameras to use the Helios 44 around the same time as uh, cameras like the Crystal um, and the Zenit 3 and 3M. This is a special version of the lens uh, made specifically for the start which, uh, as I, I mentioned before, has this uh, auto aperture lever that keeps the, um, the lens aperture open as wide as possible until the moment you take the picture, which makes it uh, a lot easier to focus in low light or if you're trying to uh, take pictures of sort of fast moving action, you know, the kind of thing that a photojournalist might be needing to do. You're watching Cosmo Photos YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. The start has a lot of things that you would kind of take for granted on a top of the range camera. It has a thumb wind for winding the film on. Uh, it has a, a shutter button and the fastest shutter speed is one one thousandth of a second which again is pretty good for the 1950s. It has a film rewind button, uh, a film reminder to remind you on, on what uh, film you've put in the camera uh, and it has this sort of mystery button here which we'll get round to a bit later. The start has a few quirks which sort of betray that it's a 1950s camera and not something from uh, a bit more recently. And one of those is the way you actually access the camera. It doesn't have a hinged back like uh, cameras like the Zenit E or you know the Nikon F. It has these keys that you need to uh, open up a bit like on rangefinder cameras at the time or Zeiss Icon SLRs. And then you lift the back of the camera which comes off in one piece. What was that mystery knob? 
I hear you asking. Well, back in the days where photographers tried to make every frame count, your film would go along here into your light tight reloadable cassette. If you got halfway through your roll of film and you wanted to change to color, or perhaps the light had got a bit low and you needed to uh, use a, a faster speed film, instead of rewinding, you could actually cut the film in half just by pulling up this little knife. It's got a kind of like a razor blade. It comes up and with a bit of force, you cut the film in two. It winds into this uh, light tight reloadable cassette and then you have however many frames that haven't been used sitting uh, nice and snug in your cassette. The start was in production for six years from 1958 to 1964 and it wasn't really very well known in the West because uh, during that period a lot of the more high-end Soviet camera designs weren't really exported to, to Western countries. But come the 1990s, the Berlin Wall has fallen and suddenly people were discovering all these Soviet era cameras. And the start, you know, quite a few of them were made, not sort of Zenit and Zorki numbers, but 75,000, which is a decent number, and they're not exactly rare to find today. Also because they were quite well built, uh, most of them work, but certainly most of the ones that I've encountered. Um, the only issue you might find is the, the shutters getting a bit draggy uh, because you know, they haven't been used for 30 years and the lubricants dry up, which is a, a common issue with cameras that have been sort of stuck in a cupboard or a, on a shelf for 30 years. Um, but they, they didn't become the prestige camera that they were supposed to be. And there's a really important reason for that is that KMZ only made one lens for them, which is the Helios 44 that you would uh, that you get when you opened the, the box. The only option you had was to use an adapter that allowed M39 mount lenses. And they were the lenses that you would find on other KMZ SLRs at the time, like the Zenit S, the Crystal, or the Zenit 3M. Uh, the only problem with that is uh, because those lenses weren't built for auto aperture operation, they were stop down lenses, you lose all the benefits of uh, having that uh, nice bright view when you're composing. So uh, Start sort of had a brief period of being a, you know, a prestige camera in the USSR but kind of fell by the wayside because they just didn't have the backup that journalists really, really wanted. I'll just end the video now with a few images I've captured over the years with uh, the start, the camera that could have been. Please like the video, subscribe, and I'll keep making reviews of some of the weird and wonderful cameras from my collection.